Hey guys, what is up? It's Michaela over here from the Mom and Baby House. Today we're filming in Cape Town in sunny South Africa. We've got Angela Morton coming over talking to us about the benefits of a doula. I'm also accompanied here by my awesome mom, Annelise. Hi moms, welcome to our YouTube channel and please stay tuned for many interesting topics to follow. So firstly, I just want to welcome Angela to the Mom Baby House. It's very exciting having you here. Thank so you thank for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for joining. So uh, I'm sure a lot of first-time moms, they're overwhelmed. Yeah. They maybe didn't expect to be expecting and are wondering, what is a doula? So a doula is many things. Um, I first just want to clarify, mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking about a doula as in the female sense. Yes. But you do get... Uh, doulas who are not wow, necessary women. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, not a lot. Yes. So I'm just generalizing. But it's fantastic in today's time. Yeah, yes. wow. absolutely. Um, so what is a doula? The quick short answer is she is a support system which is emotional, physical, mm -hmm. mental, and then yeah. informational. Mm -hmm. So she will be playing quite a good uh, part in the antenatal role and the postnatal yes, role as well. Of course. And obviously there through the birth. So um, very simply put, I also think she's a space holder mm -hmm. in the birthing process, mm -hmm. in the pregnancy yeah. process. Yeah. Uh, she is a teacher, very much so as well. But I think most importantly she her, certainly my perspective as a doula is to provide the best birthing mm -hmm. uh, experience yeah, for the parents, of course. no matter what their choices are. Mm -hmm. um, so she will help them with information, although not advise them how to birth. Yes, of course. She will direct them. Oh, so well, that's great to know. know. And of course we've got to clarify then that a midwife gives the medical support That's and it. advice and the doula mm -hmm. is much more towards the informational and emotional support yeah, so yeah, that that's it. Um, our clients just and our moms just understand that there's yeah. quite a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, for me when I was researching this it was amazing to understand what it means to hold the space mm -hmm. and it comes across that this is the old, oldest job that's been here forever, like for thousands of years, and without sounding like a feminist, it's mostly women mm -hmm. that can do this for other women, because yeah. it just seems to be that, you know, we're so understanding, we've got that loving energy, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and women just feel so safe, like one of my clients said, well, I don't want my husband, you know, to be down there, you know, he must be up here, you know, mm. I don't want him to see, yeah. you know, not the, the, the pretty side of birth, yeah. and, and I got it, she mm -hmm. doesn't want him to be the midwife, mm. she wants him to be the doula, but because he doesn't maybe know how, mm. the doula will, mm. will teach him and Absolutely. will also yeah. facilitate yes. that, so to me that, that's just huge, yeah. so our expectations of the men are very high, um, but when it comes to the crunch, I think it's too much for them. It very, so very often is. And this is where the doula's role is so important. Because people often ask, mm. is the doula going to take the role mm. of the birth partner? Is the doula going to take away from the birth? Yeah. But what the doula is doing in preparing antenatally, she is showing him where he can be of use in, in, in the birthing mm. room how he can support, how he can um, guide him. feel like he is mm -hmm. part of the birth. Because for him often it's very, it's quite scary. It is. And he doesn't know how to emotionally react sometimes. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and his loved one is, let's yes. be honest, every now yes. and then sounding completely out of yes. hand. Yes. <laughs> uh, and and, and he fix it. He's like, <laughs> yeah. and, and men are fixes, exactly. Yes, and and he's going fixes. like, whoa, I don't and, know how to handle And they're also, um, Problem solving, a uh, problem, problem yes. solvent, yes. solution yes. oriented. Yes. There you go. Yes. Exactly. Whereas, whereas, you know, the doula and woman generally can just kind of sit mm -hmm. with something and yes. hold mm -hmm. the space as mm -hmm. we go through it. Yeah. So the doula will, will will show and demonstrate to the mm -hmm. birth partner what exactly oh, where so that mm -hmm. can do, can be can where he can be helpful, and also 
you know, we, we know, like, if he's not comfortable, I mean, I've got anecdotes of men who did not want to be in the birthing room, <laughs> yes, but they, shame. you know, they were, like, latched onto <coughs> oh, by the, the mom in active yes, labor, you know, you yes. please not leave me, yes. do not leave me. Oh. So, and, you know, I've, I've been warned, like, mm. I, I can't see this baby coming out, I oh, can't shame. see blood, mm. I can't, I will faint, I will throw up, I will react. Yes, so part of the doula's job then is to always protect him. Mm -hmm. Her main mm -hmm. focus is the mom, but mm -hmm. sometimes she's got to like jiggle and protect mm -hmm. him. And this guy, yes. baby, baby came out. I stood between him. He didn't want to see the baby. Mm -hmm. Stood between sure. him, and they dried the baby skin to skin on the mom's chest. He took yes. one look at it and he ran. Sure. Uh, and he would, we heard him throwing up in the bathroom, oh. and, oh, <laughs> and no. I said, "Don't come out till I tell you you can come out." And then I had to hide the placenta from him, so because sure. the midwife had left it lying around, so I had to be between them. But sure. he, you know, had, if he'd been given a choice, he wouldn't have been mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Yeah. So, society, that expectation yeah. of him, you know, to yeah. be everything. And I'm exactly. sure there's some women that maybe don't, like you said, want their partners to see everything. Exactly. And they prefer having someone like you there. Exactly. You know? Or else mm -hmm. they then, the doula will make sure he stays at the top, mm -hmm. at the head, and we'll also then shield him mm -hmm. from yes. from anything. So we all work together yes. in that sort of thing. Yes, because it's quite important mm -hmm. in, for anybody that's watching this to understand that there's so many different types of partners. Yes. So you have moms that are more, they want to be everybody to be immersed in the yes. situation. So mm -hmm. they might decide on a water birth, so yes. they, don't, yes. they don't care who sees what, and I mean, that's wonderful. Mm. And then you've got moms that are very private, and yes. that would say to me in my shop, um, I think we'll feel less romantic if my husband maybe mm. sees things that he's uncomfortable with. Yes. So we have that kind of partnerships yeah. as well. Yeah. And we just want to make sure that um, our viewers understand that we respect all different types Absolutely. of partners yes, and we, we don't judge. It's just that we're trying to make sure that everybody's catered for yeah. and I think yes. that is amazing that a doula can facilitate that process. Definitely. And a lot of, there are doulas as well, not all doulas are comfortable with it, but mm -hmm. same-sex marriages. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, Which is a big thing now. Exactly. Yes. And um, I'm very comfortable with it and it's, you know, yeah. so, but some are not. But that's sure. again where when you choose a doula, mm -hmm. you, sure need to mm -hmm. yes. you need to resonate. You need to resonate. There needs to be the right kind of rapport. Mm -hmm. The birth expectations need to be in alignment. Mm -hmm. So okay. if, if you're a you know, you get doulas who um, some prefer to do more of the home birthing, some mm -hmm. prefer to do more of the uh, hospital births. Mm -hmm. um, some doulas are purely voluntary at the MOUs, the mm -hmm. um, midwife obstetric units in the government mm -hmm. sector, and that's an old open ball game. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, the the the, the, the private delivering, you know, if, uh, when I'm interviewed by a prospective client, mm -hmm. I will always say to them, I, I need you to interview more doulas mm -hmm. because yeah. you need to know that you've chosen mm -hmm. the best one that resonates mm -hmm. the most with you. Mm -hmm. And I think it's that, that is, it's, it is such a personal thing. And you know, when you're working in the doula, as a doula, the connection to that mom in labor, she's in the zone, in her oxytocin mm -hmm. bubble, Mm -hmm. and, and the doula goes in there with her. So you tune in mm -hmm. so that you're working at the same sort of rhythm. Mm -hmm. And it's the most wonderful feeling because it's like so being amazing. in the zone. Yeah. Yes. And, and it's sometimes you, you, you get to feel, I um, need to be hands off here. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's very much hands on. Mm -hmm. But there's this, an incredible bond. It's a mm -hmm. very beautiful thing. Yes. That's why I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think well, it's no. amazing. And I, I, one of my clients said to me that um, she, with the first birth, uh, she didn't understand what a doula was, mm. the benefits of a doula. Mm. And obviously, so she didn't have anybody there, she had a midwife there, and she said every time her husband would just leave the room to just go and text a family member, just to let them know what's happening with her, she would freak out and say, you can't leave me, you can't yeah. leave me. And, and she was 19 hours in labor. Um, That's first, a long time. 
yeah. And uh, every time he wanted to go to a bathroom, she would freak out mm. and was the anxiety second, taking over. Yeah. Yeah. So with yeah. the second birth, then she had a doula, of course, and it was a completely different experience. And like you know, her labor time with the period came sure. down to about half. Yes. So I think she gave birth in like eight hours, and mm. that's one of the major benefits mm. uh, yeah. of a doula. It's been measured, um, and it's, it's a thing. It's in the stats. And um, yes, she just said it was such an awesome experience because she would say to him, yes, honey, no, go and text. And then she would just hang on to dear life, to her do life hand. And yeah. she was fine. Yeah. And she forged yeah. that bond before the time. So yes. we've got to stress this yeah. to our audience to meet um, the, the person, the doula, mm. and then make sure you've got a bond before yeah. The birth, because yes. I think you, you can know, rely on sending her. an email or a text. You know, it's not the same. You should in person meet the yeah the doula. For sure, I Definitely. don't. I, I, I have to meet them first. Yeah, you know, and that's how a lot of doulas work mm -hmm. with. You know, we have a, a set fee, and that mm -hmm. in, incorporates two antenatal mm -hmm. um, connections from right through the whole birthing process and a few hours after the birth because we make sure that the breastfeeding is established that the baby's latch and then two postnatal appointments with follow-up and in that antenatal thing we're dealing with all of the the fears and the issues we're explaining the fear tension pain cycle that that often happens mm -hmm. the difference between working with adrenaline and working with the oxytocin we want loads of oxytocin mm -hmm. and the only adrenaline we need is at the very end when the baby's pushed out oh, yeah, okay. to get the baby out um, with loads of oxytocin there so so they then understand that they need to be in a safe space because mm -hmm. we are animals really and mm -hmm. animals will not birth publicly they will mm -hmm. find a little corner you know mm -hmm. the, the cat that has kittens in the jersey mm -hmm. cupboard Oh yeah, well, our cat also went into a basket yeah, yeah, under a table. Yeah, well, we <laughs> they are, hide. Yeah. We are no different. Yeah. They need to be safe. Mm -hmm. And women birthing, whether it's at home or in hospital, wherever it is, their birthing process is much quicker if they feel safe mm -hmm. because they're not mm -hmm. countering the oxytocin with the adrenaline. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And so, you know, it, it's a much better process. So once they can understand it, that and the doula then creates a lot of that safety. Mm -hmm. Um, because she's holding space for the birthing team, as you know, the parents as well as the care caregivers. You know, mm -hmm. we, we really are working as a unit, mm -hmm. even if we're not medical. Yes, we're still yes. Part yes. Of that. Mm -hmm. um, what I also um, heard from a client of mine is that um, when she went uh, into labour, she before she did all her. Well, she did all of her work very well. Mm -hmm. She drew up a birthing plan, yes. very in-depth plan, and I was absolutely amazed, because uh, in my days it wasn't like that at all, where she gave instructions to the hospital and all the staff members exactly mm -hmm. what pain medication mm -hmm. she's allowed, yes. uh, whether they're allowed to use forceps, or whether she's allowed to to um, tear or mm. whether she she can be cut, yes. which is also a procedure that's sometimes needed. Um, but there was so much detail, and then her hospital, how positively, and I'm sure that won't be all the time, mm. but how positively this specific team of doctors and nurses and mm. midwives and hospital then responded, because yes. I can think that can also go quite south. Mm. So you need to be quite, um, adamant that this is your birth yes. um, maybe you want to keep the placenta exactly. some moms yeah. prefer that and have everything written down and, and give it to the hospital or your team mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and then have a little bit more control over yeah. the yes. process and and i feel that's also where the doula comes in because if the plan goes um, south then you have somebody that can talk mm -hmm. for you that mm -hmm. can say um she, don't listen to her, this is her preference, we've mm -hmm. discussed this, so we're going to stick to yeah. the plan A or plan B, mm -hmm. yes. and because you then the voice of reason, which is very important to know that you, mm -hmm. the, the person that's in labour, is completely overwhelmed, mm -hmm. and might then give in and then have regrets afterwards. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be clear on mm -hmm. that, in that the doula 
cannot tell the doctor what the client wants or the, or the caregivers. Mm -hmm. So this is how we manage it. Part of my first session with a, with a client that, we, that has taken me on, has hired me, is to create a birth plan. Mm -hmm. So I have a sort of a stock okay. standard one that we go through mm -hmm. and I explain everything mm -hmm. to them, like delayed cord clamping, skin to skin, mm -hmm. um, cutting versus episiotomies, mm -hmm. you know, all of these little things that... Mm -hmm. that, that you don't maybe even think of. That you don't think of mm -hmm. because you're trusting your birth team that they mm -hmm. will do what's best for you mm -hmm. and one has to do that. But every now and then some women would rather tear than be cut because mm -hmm. the healing process is a yes, lot easier. So, yes. they, they need to put down that under no circumstances give my baby formula. Mm -hmm. This is 100% mm -hmm. breastfed mm -hmm. and I want my baby with me all the time. Mm -hmm. In hospital some of them are, you know, they're yes, specified they the different things. Yes. But we go through this whole thing and um, if it lands up as a C-section, dad, skin to skins in theatre. Mm -hmm. So then, wow. so then mm -hmm. you know, and, and so, and I facilitate a lot of that, I will help the dad in the theatre, but we get this whole comprehensive um, birth plan mm -hmm. together, mm -hmm. which then they hand one to the caregiver, whether it's the midwife or the obstetrician, I get a copy, one goes in their hospital folder when they get there, sure. and then there's one so sort of lying amazing. around, so that it's, and, and then the obstetrician normally, if it is an obstetrician or the midwife, will say, um, this would not be possible, mm -hmm. or we could only do the delayed mm -hmm. cord camping if um, the baby is 100%. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so then mostly the hospitals explain everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. But if there is a situation, um, some moms will say, I will only have pain medication if I ask mm -hmm. for it. Please don't mm -hmm. offer. Mm -hmm. okay. Because sometimes it's easier for the staff to have a medicated yes. mother. Yes. Um, you know, especially mm -hmm. if there's no doula there, mm -hmm. because it just calms things down a bit, mm -hmm. and they don't have to worry about, you know, mm -hmm. running around and, and, and dealing with her. Um, but sometimes it means that the mom feels, well, then I will have it, mm -hmm. when she's actually not ready for it. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. So we'll put something in the birth plan around pain medication only when the mom asks for it. Mm -hmm. So if I see that things are not going according to the birth plan, I won't say anything to the staff. I will remind the dad and say, that's not what was on the birth plan. Would you like to discuss it with her? Yes. So I'm holding that sort of yes. space mm, yes. without intervening. And uh, it's not our job to be one on one. That's great. It's like yeah. having a, a live Google <laughs> calendar and reminding yeah. them you as well. Because I tell you, the, the pregnant women who get in here, they forget everything. I know, it's a preggy brain all the way. It's so, totally. they're like, you know, I'm going into labor, I can't think of this. You yeah, know, exactly. get me sorted now. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And also um, we've seen in movies many times that they have these beautiful ideas, idealistic ideas. And, and then it doesn't always And in happen. the end they're like, just, you know, bring me my epidural. Epidural. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What happened? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Pain happened. But touching on what you said about C-sections and natural birth and pain medication, what is your opinion regarding, would you prefer your client to rather have natural birth or C-section and then... Also, how do you feel about a client using pain medication when it gets too much for them? So my objective as a doula is that the parents have the best possible birth mm. yes. for what they want. So if okay. I've got a couple who say, we're going for natural birth, and mm. she goes into labor and we all go off to hospital, and she's like, five centimeters but she's maybe going a bit slowly mm. and she's in active labor and it's been maybe a longer time than she expected mm. um, and she eventually says I want an epidural mm. fine absolutely mm. um, if, if her birth plan says no pain medication I will say to her your birth plan said mm. no pain mm. medication so why don't the two of you mm -hmm. discuss it yes. to the couple? Yes. So that it's it's discussed and yes. it's not yes. an emergency yes. bringing yes. the epidural yes. or the pethidine mm -hmm. or whatever yes. it is. So there's always, let's have a discussion around this. Mm -hmm. And you know, and if for example, there is an intervention that is suggested, mm -hmm. I, I explain to the moms, uh, well the parents, 
look at what we call brain, which is what are the benefits, what are the risks, mm -hmm. what are the advantages, what does your intuition tell you, mm -hmm. and what happens if you do nothing. Excellent. So then they can run that through, and if she can't, then at least he can. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, go through, okay, let me ask and find out. So they're informing themselves through the whole process. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't... If, if somebody says I'm going full on natural and under no circumstances bring me pain medication, even if I'm screaming for it, I'm sure. not going to say, you can't have it. Yes, you know? yes. of course. <laughs> or if they said, it's yeah. absolute, uh, yeah. what, what I do. Life happens. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Sure. And, you know, I've, I've, I've um, you know, worked with people who've, my longest labor ever was 52 hours. <gasps> <Whoa. laughs> it was no, it was yeah. a home oh, birth, gosh, which God. landed up in hospital mm -hmm. eventually. But That's she was a woman. Yeah, it was hectic. Her energy. And she yeah. was under no circumstances going to have pain medication, and she landed up with an epidural. And it was it it was it, it was a beautiful ending, sure. but it was very 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 long. Yeah. So she had to. Somewhere. It's a long time for you to be there. <laughs> yeah, it was very long. I was hallucinating my fingers. <laughs> Someone just bring me water splash on my face. But it would, never, ever, uh, it would mm -hmm. never ever, it would never ever have happened. It was a home birth with a private midwife who knew what she was doing. Um, a hospital situation would not have allowed it. They would have C-sectioned yeah, sure. earlier. And, and, and that was her choice. Mm -hmm. It was her yes. choice. Yes. And um, you obviously work, do you prefer to work with a midwife? Because for me, that's the ultimate team, to have yeah. a doula and a midwife. Yes. And obviously, not everybody can afford it. I don't, we can talk about costs just now, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. do you also prefer a midwife to be there? Or what is your take on that? So, I'm one of these super chilled, very flexible mm -hmm. people. I just go with whatever there okay. is. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've worked with fabulous midwives, mm -hmm. and the, the midwives, so I, I differentiate between yes. a midwife and an obstet obstetric nurse. Okay. A midwife to me is more of a private midwife who's employed by the client either for a home birth. Yes. Um, or a hospital, or birthing in a hospital backed up by an obstetrician. Um, and there's unfortunately only one place in Cape Town now where that's happening, where the private midwives are, are backed up by the obstetricians. Oh, okay. sure. um, so that's just how it is. Yes. And so that, that those are very lovely births. Okay. Um, but m the majority of the births that I do are hospital births okay. with an obstetrician. The obstetric nurse is the hospital obstetric nurse. She has a midwifery qualification. Okay. And I've done deliveries where the obstetrician hasn't got there in time and, and the obstetric nurse has delivered. Mm -hmm. So there are these sort of subtle differences, but a, mm -hmm. for me a midwife is the, is the one who delivers the baby okay. without okay. needing the obstetrician unless okay. there's a... There's I think that's also very nice. Yes. Mm. Um, because because a lot of people don't know, mm. know or they struggle figuring yeah. that little yeah. difference out. Yeah. And is, um, we don't have to talk about rands and cents, but is it a service that is affordable for, for most people? And we obviously refer now to the South African population. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, it is, doulas are still viewed as a bit of a luxury, okay. um, mm. only certain doulas are covered by certain medical, medical aids, aids. and um, one of the things is that a lot of the claims are not met because there's some little sort of technicality okay. somewhere. Yes. So what I do, and I know some of the other doulas do it, is I say, you know, look, I'd rather be at your birth than you say you can't be at my birth because you can't afford me. So I make I, 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 I sort of a range of payoff okay. terms All scenario right. for yes. for a lot of them. So so how them. most of us work is we need a yes. deposit up front. Yes. Um, and then we invoice again for the balance round about the birth. Some of us are two weeks early. Okay. Some of us are at the birth. Some of us are post birth. Yes. Um, but I view it as affordable you'll see on my little flyer there that okay. says if affordable <laughs> if, well it says you know if 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 doulas were a drug 
Mm. It would be unethical not to use them. <laughs> okay, that's, so very, that's very good. Yeah. For so, and, uh, yeah. and you know, just to also clarify, you come in at what stage before the mm. birth? And I hear that you leave as soon as you feel the baby is latched well. No. And, and just to is touch on that, that's yeah. also what I was wondering because I have had a client with a situation where she would have liked to do that to stay longer, but obviously this is something mm. I'm sure that's discussed ahead of time. Absolutely. But um, she she definitely struggled with on dealing with when the baby's here mm. and afterwards mm. and the effects it can have on you psychologically. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So basically what, what happens is from the moment I'm hired I'm on what's mm. that call for information. Okay. Yeah. Um, and if stuff starts happening to you and you're worried, you know, I mean, an example would be, um, you know, when the ligaments are all starting to soften and, you know, and you have all these incredible pains mm -hmm. and aches and things that you never yes. thought mm -hmm. you were going to have. Mm -hmm. Instead of having to go to the, the GP or your obstetrician, then just give the doula a shout and she can normalize whatever's happening yeah. and although she is not a midwife again i need to yes. stress that and she's yes. not a clinician she has enough experience to know that that kind of pain is not okay oh or that God. discharge is yes. not okay yes. then refer off to the, the obstetrician yeah. so yeah. So you're like a middleman between the yes, two. Yes, yeah. You're yeah. just easy and quicker to reach. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, w when she starts, I mean, most, especially first-time moms, they're going to mm. have the prodromal labor process, which is niggle, niggle, stop, 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 start sort of thing, which is very frustrating mm. because you think this is it and then it yeah. goes away. Yeah. This oh, is it and it goes away. So and you, I'm sure you later on hallucinate, like may, maybe this problem is coming up. Maybe yes. this is an issue. Yes, yeah, yeah. Shame. So I stay in touch with the moms, the, well, the, the couple, through that whole process. Okay. And I explain to them, you know, go to the bath or change your acti activity, you know, and I sort of talk them through that process. Mm -hmm. And then when they feel they need me, which is usually when active labor starts. So they're now starting to, to you know, the contractions are starting yes. and they're, they're struggling to actually talk through them. And I talk to them on the phone so that I can hear what's going yeah. on. Because if I talk to the partner, there are partners often say, no, we need you here now. <laughs> yes. Because yes. that's their yes. anxiety. So <laughs> emergency. Yes. Yes. Exactly. This cannot Shame. be normal. No. But look, hey, some of the dads, and no no discrimination in you, look <laughs> in here in the days and like, my wife says she, um, I don't know which one, just give me, just give me so in the shop. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. So they're, they're overwhelmed by the whole thing. And then I talk to the mom, and then I either go to the house, to their home, and we ascertain how she is, okay. and I get her through as much as she feels comfortable yes. doing okay. at home. Yes. And then after the birth, then you wait. Yeah. Then we go to the hospital, I'm there throughout yes. the whole birth, and yes. I just need to add, personally, I don't leave her side except for bathroom breaks. Okay. Okay. And then, so I'm a constant, 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 you were saying earlier, yes. when Dave went outside yes. to text, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, if I need to eat, I'll just discreetly mash something. <laughs> <out. laughs> Grab a privy, don't you? Yeah, that's okay. exactly, to privy, that's yeah. exactly it's what like I do. It's like having your mom there, mm -hmm. but your mom's yeah. been trained in no. <laughs> yes. you know, how to deal with you. But yeah. you know what's quite sad is a lot of our clients live far away from their parents. Yes. So the mom can't always be, or they don't get there in time. Yes for the birth, yeah. so, or even a best friend maybe, or family yeah. member, whoever you wanted there might not be able to get there because yes. of the traffic or distance. But you yes. also need to get permission mm. to allow no, of course. even your mom mm. into the yes. hospital. Yes. So, so but that's so why it's so nice mm. to have a doula. Mm. Yeah. Well, we, we're mostly welcomed. <laughs> mostly <laughs> there, sure. are a few, there are a few um, <laughs> places that, that are Kind of that's still in the stone age. But that's fine. It's we just were out there. there. <laughs> we're working on it. Oh, sure. But then after the birth, just to get back yes. to your question there, okay, yes. after the birth, I stay until the parents are comfortable. Okay. Um, the birth I did this week was a, a C-section, and I made sure that the mom was fully latched, fully comfortable, mm -hmm. her spinal block was beginning to come around, and mm -hmm. made sure that dad was 
absolutely fine with mm-hmm. being Not left. Falling over, <laughs> Not talking coherently. <laughs> so I was there uh, for three and a half hours after the birth. Oh, I've left that's birth nice. an hour sure. after the birth when everything's been fine and mum's clearly, or the parents are clearly, you don't, we don't need you anymore. Yes. And yes. sometimes... We need our space now. Exactly, yeah, that's, that's right. it. We need because to have that topic on the table. Yeah, how it affects to the inter- intimacy between couples mm. after the birth of the baby. Because mm. that, that's a whole new <laughs> kind of work. Yeah, we all have enough. to have a whole other interview. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. But for sure. now, enough talking about doulas and how amazing they are, which we appreciate. <laughs> how long have you been a doula? And what is it inside of you that inspired you to? be one because it's quite a specific type yeah. of job yeah I think well, it's a calling it, yeah. Yeah. oh it's definitely a yes. calling and a passion you don't decide what career am I going to do I think mm. I'll be a do because that <laughs> kind of, because you're not going to no. pay the rent with being a doula yes, unless no. you burn out every now no. and then so mm. so probably about six years ago Mm-hmm. Um, being a life coach and a counsellor and even a therapist, I was coming up with quite uh, people coming to me with abandonment issues, mm-hmm. and I kind of tracked back to a lot of it was at birth, mm-hmm. and I thought there's got to be a better way of doing this, and I sort of shelved that for a bit. But to just wind the clock back again further, many, many, mm-hmm. many decades ago, I was a student nurse, and I didn't complete my qualification. Okay. But I was fascinated by the birthing part of that. Mm-hmm. And then fast forward to, I'm trying to think, my godson is now 28. Um, I inadvertently do it my best friend through mm-hmm. the birth of my godson. And I had, we had this incredible connection through mm-hmm. the process. Mm-hmm. And I knew, because my eldest then was two, that I knew where it hurt. I knew how to touch mm-hmm. her. Mm-hmm. And it just forged a better bond between mm-hmm. the two of us and I never forgot that. It was just such an incredible experience. It was enlightening. It was. And it was also the oxytocin. The doula gets an oxytocin rush as and well. Let me well. tell you, I'm an oxytocin <laughs> junkie. Well, you must naturally <laughs> impart them to feel yeah. automatic. Uh, yeah. 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 And intuitive. Yeah. No, and definitely. And so it then kind of landed up um, where a friend of mine um, did the doula training course through Mama Bamba and she posted on Facebook and I went, it was like, that's mm-hmm. it. Epiphany, this is it. This is <laughs> it. The next door in my life. And there, yeah, and so then I went into the training, mm-hmm. absolutely loved it. The Mama Bamba oh. training, which is where I trained and I'm now one of their trainers, it's oh, very so much nice. not this is what you do as a doula, mm-hmm. it's yes. who are you mm-hmm. as a doula and okay. how do you bring yourself to yes. birth as opposed to step one, sit down, yes. step two sort of yes. thing. So um, yeah, that's how I got there. And I, I picked that that's up that cool. when you need a doula is to source the right doula. Yes. So I hear mm-hmm. you, um, I've had somebody that said, I want a Christian doula because yes. I want to pray exactly. with yes. the, during the birthing yes. process, then you search for that. So yes. you have different types of doulas. Mm-hmm. So I think it's important for the moms to realize mm-hmm. that. Yeah. It, it's not a quick thing. No. It's give it some thought. Yes. Um, I just want to conclude when I was researching uh, this um, amazing uh, topic of ours, I came across the most amazing stats yeah. regarding the benefit of a doula. And um, mm. I, I see on now your, is the time to share. Yeah, on your pamphlet, <laughs> you have it as well. Yeah. And uh, it, th- this has been, it's everywhere the stats yeah. and these books, etc. Uh, I think I read a book from a doctor. If they want to go and research this, yeah. um, I can give them Dr. John Kennell mm-hmm. and Marshall Klaus. And they've done research. Um, they took six birth centers of stats. And they looked at 5,000 women wow, um, having women with doulas and women without. Mm-hmm. And the stat, stats came in, it looks very similar to yours. Um, 40%, I actually found 50% mm-hmm. less women uh, needed to have a C section. This mm-hmm. is like huge. Yeah. Because we, uh, most moms huge. that walk in and I ask them, oh, 
you know, just maybe some conversation to mm -hmm. them, having natural C-section, because that also, you know, determines are they going to be bending down when they're using our products, for yes, example. Yes, yes. They all say, definitely aiming for natural birth, and about, you know, five out of ten maybe will mm -hmm. come back saying we did end up, you know, having oh, natural yes. birth, mm -hmm. and the other five, unfortunately, we had to get yes, a C-section, yes. I just couldn't. Mm -hmm. Or because of obviously medical reasons they had Or to. the head was too big or... Yes, um, yes. yes. Or baby was maybe breached. And mm -hmm. then 50% less moms needed um, any drugs. 30% mm -hmm. any that did not need any pain medication. This is like huge. Mm -hmm. And then 34%, this is your stats, mm -hmm. um, did not need forceps delivery. I think mm. I, I might even have something extra to add. Mm. I was just so, so... Ooh, epidurals, <laughs> epidurals. <laughs> 60% yeah, less yeah. women needed to request an epidural. Mm. I think this is absolutely percentage. amazing. Oh, and the labor length, and we talked about yes. that. 25% less time mm. in labor. This is huge long. Yeah, so nice. please... Google, or no, go on the Mom and Baby House website, there's a database, you click on services, <laughs> and you're going to see the list of doulas. <laughs> yeah, and then you'll find Angela. Thank you so Angela. much for your time, Angela. It's an absolute and pleasure. And one last thing, if you have one piece of advice for any other doulas in the mm -hmm. industry, what can they do that will you know, enhance and empower women during the birthing process? I know there's a lot there's a huge can say <laughs> that you think would be you know completely a necessity sure. so the it's first specific. thing that comes to mind for me is that they have to remember through the whole process mm -hmm. that it's not their birth it's the mom and the mm -hmm. dad's birth mm -hmm. and that they need to facilitate in giving them the birth that they want not the birth mm -hmm. that the driller feels mm -hmm. that she yes. would like them to have and the other thing is to all dollars, self-care, mm -hmm. otherwise you burn out. Mm -hmm. Be realistic about what mm -hmm. you can take on. Be realistic about mm -hmm. how many births in a month. There yes. is nothing more stressful than knowing you've got three moms who are all due at the same time. Sure. <gasps> and we do work with backups. Yeah, we have helpful. to work with backups. Sure, but still. But it's, yeah. it's, it's, it, is a, it is a stress because it, it, you know, it impacts your life. Yes. You're on call. Yes. And if you're on call for three people at the same time, it's sure. very difficult. Sure. Well, yes. I think we can then conclude. Um, I mean, this is something that I read in one of the books that a midwife gives you a safe birth, but a doula gives you a great birth. Ah, oh, that's, <laughs> that's good to put on a t-shirt. <laughs> Fantastic. Good one. New slogan. <laughs> Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, please be so kind to give it a thumbs up on our Facebook page. Make sure to share it with your friends and family and stay tuned next week for our latest video. Do you have got anything to say on me? All good. Okay guys, have a super day. Check you next week. Bye.